Welcome everybody to video four of Being Innovator with Flow. If you're joining us new, we are going step by step to build an automated business process from start to finish. Watch the videos, share your progress online, and get a chance to win some fun prizes. All right, so in video three, we got hands on with Flow Builder and we started to build out our flow and our first screen. In video four, we're gonna dive right back into Flow Builder, continue to build, while also revisiting some key flow concepts. All right, I'm super excited to hear from our admin evangelists, um, Leanne Rimel and Mark Baseman, about how we can work with the create records element and variables. All right, let's hear from them. Thanks, Rebecca, and welcome back, awesome admins, for video four of the Be an Innovator flow campaign. So last time we spent time with Mark and with Shannon Hale, the product manager for Flow, talking about all of the new things being delivered in Flow and really how it's useful for admins and how it's different than some of the other automation tools. We also started building our Flow, we created a screen and we added values to that screen or input values to that screen and we tested that in the debug mode so we could see a preview of that screen. So we loved seeing all of your previews and your, your debugs out there that you were sharing on Twitter. And let's revisit some of those concepts before we continue building our flow today. So Mark, there's a couple concepts we're gonna be relying on today as we do the next steps in our flow building. And could you kind of review some of those with us? Yeah, so there are two things, main concepts that I wanna talk about. The first one is variables. And Shannon talked a little bit about this, but really all a variable is is a container to store information. So if you think about a variable that's storing information, what are the kinds of things that we wanna store? We wanna store information about maybe a single data point, right, like a text field or number, or you might wanna store information about a record. So that's a single record, a record variable, or you might wanna store information about a whole list of records, and that's a collection variable. So the idea being that you're storing information temporarily that you can use across your entire flow. The second thing I wanna talk about is elements. So elements, these are when you're taking some sort of action inside your flow. And the element that we're gonna focus on today is the create records element, which I know, creates records. What does it do? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it does. So those are the, the variables and the elements that we're gonna, we're gonna focus on today. Awesome, so thank you for that great explanation. It's important to revisit you know, some of these concepts. Variables, and if variables are a little bit of a tough concept at first, that is totally okay. It can take totally. a while, but as you build your flows and you find out how you're using them in flows, um, I think you'll all you know, really start to get up to speed on variables and it becomes a concept that you get really comfortable with. Totally. So um, the best way to get up to speed with variables is to work with them. And build so let's, flow. yeah, so we're gonna keep building our flow, right? So Sunshine Chocolates, right? We said we wanted the screen for the problem we're solving. We wanted a screen for people to input their project feedback. We also want that to create a new record, right? And we wanted to create that log, that project feedback in Salesforce. So let's go ahead and jump back into our flow. So now we're gonna take a look at how we can add that additional element that we talked about to our flow, make it do more. So we open up our flow and we've got our feedback screen, we've got our start, we've got our connector, but we want this flow to do something. And we've got that error message that, hey, this flow isn't doing anything. And what we're gonna do is we're going to add another element because we want this flow in our use case to be creating a new record, a new project feedback record when we have people engaging with that screen and putting in values. So on our left in our toolbox, we have our create records is one of our element type and our data. And you can see all of the elements, they're named in a pretty intuitive way. We've got our core actions, um, things like send an email. We also have our data, how we're working with data. So things like getting records, updating records and creating records. It's very intuitive how those are named. And we have some logic that um, the option to drag over assignments or drag over loops, which we haven't talked about in this flow, but you'll be learning about in your trailhead modules. So let's go ahead and bring our create records element over. Now we're gonna call this create records element the create new project feedback record. It's great to name things for kind of what they're doing. And we also wanna make sure that we add a description um, this is really important as you're creating flows and working with flows, there's this great description field, which is basically allowing you to kind of comment in on the things that you're building and add that documentation right within the flow. So we'll describe what this element is going to do. Now in the create records, we have some options 
to decide. So one of those is how many records we want to create. For this example, we just want to create one record. But you know, Shannon did talk about some of those options, some of those advanced flexibilities and options that we have with Flow. And this is where you start to see some of those come alive a little bit more, the things that we can do with these elements, working with multiple records, using different variable sets. So here we're gonna create one record. We wanna create one project feedback record. And here now we decide where were those values come from? How do we decide what is gonna be on that new project feedback record? Well, we're gonna select this use separate variables, resources, and literal values because we're gonna be bringing in uh, data that we've been collecting on the screen and variables we've been collecting in this process, we're gonna bring in from kind of different places to create this new record. So we create a record of the object type project feedback, and now we get to select the values. So on the left, we can select the fields. We have all those fields. This is where um, if you're doing a different type of flow than us, if you are building something for your unique business use case, you'll see the fields that you created right in your object or the object that you're working with to create that record type these are where those fields come up and we're going to tie all those screen input values all of those um, that details field that escalation checkbox this is where we tie those things from the screen to what this new project feedback record is going to look like so the first thing we can select is let's say details so we've got our field details on the left here and then on the right we have all of those options that are available to us to populate the value of this new, of the, you know, what's in the details field. So we have like global constants. This is where we can set a new resource value if there's like a text that we always want to be in this field, for example. Um, but we, we, if we scroll down, we see a section here of our, on our resources of screen components. So every time you were adding one of those input options on your screen, it was creating a new resource for you as a screen component. So this is something we can refer back to later. So when you think about in your toolbox, the manager tab there and all those resources that are available to you, some of those resources are ones that you created when you create the variables. Some of them are those record choice sets and some of them are ones that are automatically created when you're creating, you know, dragging um, options onto your screen. So here we're gonna say we want the screen component of details to be populate in the details field and let's keep going and select the different values so we've got the um, escalation needed or needs escalation field and then this is where we can select what we want that value to be so if that's checked then we want that to be a yes so we have that part checked and we provide the value of the screen input value what that should be great now we're going to continue adding the fields so we've got the rating so that project rating, we populated the options there based on what was in the pick list. So we have our pick list values, one, two, three, four, five, but we don't want that to be like a constant thing there, right? So we wanna actually say what they selected on the screen component, what they selected as rating to be populating that rating value. So we're gonna select rating to rating. Now we're gonna add the project, so that's because this is the master detail uh, lookup field that's on the project feedback object. We've got project, and we wanna make sure that we are populating the right project ID, right? When someone's filling out a feedback, we don't just want it to be a feedback that's floating out there in the world. But we haven't collected that project ID yet. So we've talked a lot about variables and how we think about variables. This is when we're gonna create a variable for collecting that project ID. So we're gonna go ahead and new resource and say variable, and we're gonna call this cur project. And that just means the project that we're currently working with. And we wanna add a description here. Again, we want this to be you know, something that's very clear how we're using it. And the data type will be text. And for this, it's, we're gonna leave the multiple variables unchecked because this isn't a collection. We're not gonna be collecting multiple project IDs. Every time this flow is triggered or is, is launched, it's gonna be on a specific project page. So we just need that one project ID value. And we're also going to make this available for input. This is really important. If we're building a flow, a screen flow, or an auto-launched flow, and we want to have it be working, for example, with a record and be either you know counting related records for a specific record or doing something on a record, creating a new record, updating a record, we need to have that record ID. And 
we're going to be populating that record ID from outside of this flow, which is what we say when we say available for input. So available for input means it's available for process builder. It means it's available um, to when you add it to a record page using app builder. So let's go ahead and click done here. So once we created that variable, now we can go ahead and add that as the value here, current project. Awesome. Now we have to select how do we want to store um, that project feedback ID. So we want to, in our flow, be containing whenever we're creating new records, we want to have a place that we're storing um, the ID for that new record because we might want to do something else with that later, right? We want we want to be using that in our flow. So we'll call this one new project feedback. So we're going to click done. And then actually just add that there. So now that we've added our new element, we can go ahead and drag the connector to connect that feedback screen to the create new records. And we always want to save our work. Now here's where we can run debug again. So we run debug, but now we'll see this is different than the last time we ran debug because we added that variable and we made that available for input. So now here we have that option to input a specific uh, record ID for you know project record and test it against that. So let's go ahead and maybe create a test record and have that project ID so that you can test it. And you, when you put that in and then click run, you'll be able to see it show up and you can add your test data here and then go ahead and click next. And now on the right, um, on the debug, you can see did it you know successfully create the record, right? Like would it have successfully created the record? So that's how you can add that final element there and test your project or test your flow. And next time we'll be deploying to our users. Awesome. So we're looking forward to all of you sharing the debug um, of your flow. Now the debug button is awesome for both previewing your screen, like when you're creating a screen like that and previewing your flow. And then also on that right panel, make sure that you're sharing, you know, the debug results. It's a great way to, to test your flows. So thank you so much for your explanations, Mark, you and your insight into variables and elements. And we look forward to seeing all of your awesome debug screens all over Twitter, and we will see you next time. Back to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Leanne and Mark, for talking us through the second step in building out our flow. I learned so much. To summarize, my main key takeaways are one, we learned from Mark that elements are these items in our flow toolbox that we can use to help us take action with our flow. We then can connect the values a user inputs on our flow screen to the field values in the project feedback record. And lastly, we can continue to use the debugger to test and preview our flows. All right, so now it's your turn. We want you to share a screenshot of your debug results with us. Share this on Twitter using hashtag be an innovator to enter to win. All entries for video four must be completed and tweeted with hashtag be an innovator by midnight, 11.59 p.m. Pacific time on April 28th. Restrictions do apply, so see rules for details. Now, I know we covered a lot of complex topics in this video, so be sure to go to the trail mix and complete the modules to get a deeper understanding um, of flows. And then join us for video five of Be an Innovator to learn how to distribute your flow so you can deploy it to your users. All right, see you next time.